Hey, this is Thomas from fieldtennis.net and today I want to show you a few drills to learn the pronation on the serve. So pronation is the rotation of the forearm inward. So when you're serving, if you do it correctly, the racket approaches the ball with the edge and it, then we say the arm pronates, the forearm pronates. So the racket can face the ball and the racket again turns on the edge and goes into the follow through. So this short movement here is the pronation. And actually this movement is very powerful if you know how to do it right. So let me show you a few drills how to work on that. Before I go on to drills on how to work on the pronation, I want to mention two reasons why the pronation doesn't happen. The first one I've discussed before in the waiter serve video, which is the serve when you approach the ball with the face of the racket. So it's called the waiter serve. So here obviously the pronation doesn't happen because pronation happens like this. Or we can say that the pronation happens very, very early in the serve. So even with the continental grip, you can approach the ball and open your forearm so that you open the face of the racket and then hit the ball so it would look something like this. So I can feel the rotation of my forearm very early. So that's not the correct way to pronate. So I've shown some reasons in the waiter serve video. So just follow the link and you will see what are the reasons why we do this. And so this is one of the reasons why the pronation doesn't happen correctly. And the other reason that's actually connected to this is this desire for control and not letting go enough. Because the pronation actually happens by itself if you really let go. So I'll show from this angle. If I really have a loose arm and I swing and I rotate my shoulders, you can see that if I really let go, the racket wants to go out this side. So you can just try on your own. If, if you really rotate your shoulders and you swing, the racket wants to go out. So my forearm is turned this way and my forearm arm, arm is now stretched and it wants to come back into a more comfortable position. So as you can see, the, the pronation actually happens by itself because the forearm, forearm in the serve is stretched the opposite way. So now I can feel a stretch here and my forearm wants to come back. And that's why the pronation actually happens just by itself. So when we feel that the pronation is starting to happen, we can add to it. So one of the biggest mistakes I see with players, especially when they're learning pronation, is they do it all by themselves. The pronation is quite a natural movement if you let it happen. So when you feel that the pronation starts to happen, then you add a little bit to it. So again, if you really let go of the serve and you rotate the shoulders, the forearm we're gonna, is going to rotate the other way and then it's just going to come back, it's going to spring back like a rubber. So that's why the pronation is fairly natural, but you have to really let go of the surf. And of course, that's usually the problem with recreational players or junior players, because there's this desire for control. And because you always practice the surf and you're trying to hit the court. So when you work on the surf, it's very important to understand that you say, okay, today I'm going to work on the technique. And you maybe you think about the pronation, whatever, you want to work on and you don't worry about the court and you just work on the on something you want to work on you see how it goes and you must let the ball go so you don't aim in the court just let the ball fly and then you focus on the proper technique that you're working on and eventually you bring in the court into play and you're trying to put the ball in the court as i said the pronation is fairly natural and those of you that can throw a ball fairly decently, you will see that all that happens automatically. So if I just do like a normal throwing motion and I want to throw the ball, I will automatically pronate. So those of you that have a problem with the waiter's serve, I challenge you and I'm asking you to try this. Do a few serves with your normal waiter's serve, then try and throw the ball that way. So see how that feels and you will see that it doesn't feel natural. So what the waiter's serve would go something like this towards the ball. So throwing the ball in that way, copying the waiter's serve technique would feel like this. Okay, so it's not a natural movement. So it's, it feels very strange. When we throw the ball, we actually point the ball outward and the forearm is this way. Then we rotate and then the ball points this way, so inward. 
and then we release and this is this is where the pronation happens so from this angle it's just a very natural throw of the ball creates pronation automatically if I were not to pronate so if I were to copy again the waiter serve then I would throw like this so this is a throw without pronation and as you can see it doesn't look very natural I feel strained here and I don't produce a lot of power so the first exercise to work on your pronation is just throwing more balls and just being slightly more aware of what happens in your forearm just try and really accelerate throwing the ball and you will feel the most natural way to pronate the next exercise you can do to work on the pronation is to actually do it very slowly and we can exaggerate by coming to the ball so your imaginary ball with the edge then we pronate and then we follow through behind our back when we follow through behind the back we really have to twist the forearm so we really feel what pronation is so try this drill serve and, and follow through behind your back one thing that's very important as I mentioned before when I watch players work on the pronation or when I look at the club players they tend to do the pronation too early because they're so conscious so they will go you will go up with the racket and then you will pronate so that's way too early the pronation happens by itself at some point so just extend your arm and keep going and you will see that your arm does the pronation so do not pronate before the arm extends so just keep going the arm extends then you pronate so very important you just keep going with the racket so when you're extended now you pronate then you go behind your back so that goes for all pronation exercises keep that in mind don't force the pronation the pronation happens by itself the arm just unwinds uncoils then when you feel it you can push a little bit here I'll show another exercise later so keep that in mind so go here and you follow through behind your back so you can just practice you keep in mind I'm approaching the ball with the edge and I follow through behind my back once you do about 10 or 15 or 20 of these you can do the same and then follow through in front so this is just a dry run of the surf and it's very helpful because you're creating muscle memory where the ball doesn't disturb you so again you're going this way and follow through in front one more thing very important on the surf it's actually part of the surf technique and it's another reason why your surf may not work why the pronation may not work and that's orienting too much towards the court so when we serve when you make contact with the ball it may look like that the player is oriented toward the court but that's not the case if the grip is continental when the player hits the serve and he knows how to serve then the player is always at an angle so I'm maybe at a 45 degree angle when I'm making contact with the ball so the racket face is pointing towards the court but my body is not if I force my body to face the court then if the racket points actually that way so then I really have to strain my arm to make the ball go straight the next tip you can keep in mind when you're working on the pronation is the role of the index finger index finger is very important to pronate correctly and it's important that the index finger is a little bit higher on the racket handle so you don't want to hold the racket like this even though it's continental you want to keep the finger a little bit higher up because when you pronate the base of the index finger and the index finger actually push the racket into the pronation so together with your hand you're actually pushing with the base of the index finger here and that's what creates the pronation so it's very important that the finger is a little bit up so when you're coming to the ball you want to push so what you want to feel here is that you actually point where you want to serve with your finger so try and feel that when you serve you can try without the racket you're approaching the ball and then you just 
twist your arm, you pronate and you push where you want to serve. So then try and feel that on your racket. So push, you can even extend the finger and you will really feel what it means to pronate, what it means to push the racket. So keep in mind approaching the ball with the edge like this and then push. So again in this direction going up and then feeling the push of the index finger towards the outside. The next two drills are done with the balls. So we are serving the ball and we're doing in two ways. The first way is hitting the ball with a slice. So just position yourself on the left of the center mark and you're going to serve towards the edge side and you're going to approach the ball with slice. So first you're going to slice the ball and you're going to pronate later. So try and feel that how you slice the ball and pronate later because oftentimes the pronation happens too early so now we want to force it to happen too late. So you don't have to even serve the ball over the net first but you just want to start here. You want to slice the ball and then pronate. So just do it in slow motion like I'm doing like this and pronate and then you're going to try and do the pronation slightly earlier progressively so you're going like this and pronate and again slice and pronate and as you can see the ball flies further and further because I'm just firing the pronation slightly earlier even though I'm going still with the slice on the ball so that's a very good exercise also to correct the waiter serve but also to learn the right timing of the pronation. So at first you want to delay it, you want to do it slightly too late. So after the slice you pronate and then you're just starting to fire a little bit early and then you will feel when the ball flies nicely off your racket. The next drill is done in a similar fashion when you're standing at the same place and you're facing the net post and you won't rotate your body so you're all the time you're facing diagonally towards the target and then you're just going to isolate the pronation. So make sure that your body is that way and now you're just going to pronate which makes the racket go straight towards the net. So this is a drill, a very good drill to, to really feel the pronation because you isolate it and you really have to push with your forearm forward. You have to rotate because if you didn't rotate the ball would go straight where I'm facing. So again approach the ball with the edge and as you can see when I'm approaching the ball with the edge the racket face is already pointing towards the court so in your, mi in your mind must be very clear mental image what happens on the serve so what doesn't happen on the serve is that we align the racket face behind the ball and push it there what really happens is that the racket comes diagonally on the ball and then changes direction so this is a slight simplification of the serve but it's a very good mental image to have so the racket goes like this as you can see the racket is now pointing towards the target and now I push that way so this way and that way so just do that when you're serving and you will really feel a good pronation at the end I want to show two very fun exercises to work on the pronation. The first one is smacking in the ground. At least how that's how we call it oftentimes. So it's very important that you approach the ball first with the edge. You don't want to, again you can do the waiter serve even here. So smacking in the ground looks something like this. But you don't want to open the racket face so just try and feel how it feels if you go with the edge and then you pronate and you follow through on your right side. So smacking in the ground looks like this. As you can see it's not very forceful but the ball really bounces up. Here's one more. And when I do the pronation correctly I will feel that my elbow is pushed back up. So you don't want to keep pushing down with your elbow and doing this exercise. You want to feel that your elbow is pushed up and down you're going, you're going down with your hand and with your racket head. So it's very important to keep in mind not going down with your whole arm but just accelerating the racket head. So here's one more example and also not start too forcefully just start nice and then just do a little smack like this and if you can do that so that the ball really bounces up that's when you do the pronation correctly. Another fun exercise to work on your pronation is hitting the ball back 
So just drop the ball like this, find the right position and hit the ball backwards. So when you do that, you really have to twist your forearm, you really have to pronate, you have no other choice. Actually, you do have a choice, you can do the waiter serve again and try and hit the ball like that. But if you do the pronation, you will really feel how you can accelerate. So again, think about approaching the ball with the edge and then pronating. So here's another example. So you will sometimes even see this trick shot when the pros do it. So it's a very fun exercise, but actually it forces you to do the pronation correctly. So if you combine all these exercises, every time you have a surf session, you do one or two of these exercises, you should be feeling the pronation, the effect of the pronation and getting rid of the waiter serve in a very short time.